Hello everyone. My last video has gave an overview of how to set up Teams through Glow and how to use the app as well and a couple of troubleshooting problems. I did skim over aspects of Teams, but really this video should help you get right into using Teams. I want to give a real in-depth look of all of the features and functionality of Teams and also what the pupil experience will be so that you can understand aspects of where they're going to be able to come from. I really hope it's helpful. It will be quite a long video, so you might want to skip ahead to different parts. I'll use title cards and I'll index the time codes at the start so you'll be able to just scroll to the correct time for the thing that you want to learn. If there's anything in this video that I've not covered that you really would like a bit of advice on, feel free to give me a tweet to at Mr. Vice Class and I'll try and help you out as best as I can. See you later. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Microsoft Teams app on the desktop, but you can get it on any smartphone or tablet or PC, or of course you could log in through your Glow. And if you have any problems signing in, there is a troubleshooting video available in my blog. So I'm going to assume that you do not currently have any teams in place. If that's the case, you will have a join or create team bar over here. But if you do have something and that's not the team that you want to add your pupils to, go up to the top right hand corner where it says join or create team. And you want to create a team. If someone has sent you a code to join their team, you can enter it there and you'll be able to send a code to your team if you'd rather that they just input that then you add them, but it is much easier for your children if you just add them. You want to make a class, but there are the options as well to make a staff team or a um, PLC or any other type of team. Name your class. For this, I'm just using a demonstration class and I'm gonna add one student, but you would want to add your entire class. And when you found your student, press add. You can type in multiple students, so I could add another one here. So you could put in all of your students at once. You do also have the option to add teachers, and this is a really good idea just for safeguarding purposes, but also so that other teachers can have an input for your class as well. It saves you having to monitor it at all times. So I want to go through absolutely everything on Teams, and let's come out of the this particular demo class team first of all. So to go back to my overview of teams, I click all teams and this is where I can see all of the different teams that I have and you can see demo classes now here. Up in the top left hand corner we have activity and this just lets you see a quick overview of notifications that you have allowed. Chat, if you want to talk to any of your contacts or any of your recent contacts um, individually, you absolutely can. You'll notice with pupils though that there is disabled chat for this user. You can't talk to them individually and that is um, for obvious safeguarding reasons. So assignments. I'm going to click on the demo class which is one of my classes. And I can create assignments and quizzes and I can do other things. So I could press get started here and let's create something. So I want to create a quiz for my kids to do. And it's going to be through Forms, Microsoft Forms. So that's you often use it to make questionnaires for your school. Um, you can use it to make quizzes. I'll make a tutorial on how to use Forms at another point. But do go in and check it out. It's a really powerful app and it's quite simple to use. You can also create an assignment. You enter the title, instructions, any resources such as Word or PowerPoint that you want. Um, you can put in points if you want, you assign it to the class or you choose individual students and you can set a due date and a due time. So this is really powerful if you want to get certain things or certain pieces of assessment handed in for you to mark and see progress, especially during the lockdown period. So your calendar is where you can actually schedule your meetings. There is an option to do it in the team itself, but this is slightly more comprehensive and gives you a few more features. So you click on calendar, you go into new meeting, 
and I want to make a meeting for the demo class. So I'm just going to call it demo class meeting. Add required attendees. Now this is optional and I'll show you that in a wee second, but change the date and the time so that it's a scheduled meeting that comes up in the timeline of everyone that you're wanting to invite to the meeting so that they know exactly when they're supposed to be in your class. If you want to repeat it, great, turn that on. If you don't want it to repeat, just leave it as do not repeat. Add channel. Now this is kind of the part where you get to add your class. So if you click on add channel, I would go into my demo class, I'd click the arrow, and the channel is this wee part here, general. So I'd click general and that invites everyone in my demo class. And I'll talk more about channels in a wee while because they are quite powerful and a great way of allowing for collaborative work, especially if you're in a secondary school setting or you've got individual assignments or maybe you just want to use groups. Like anyone who's doing setting, for example, would be able to do a, a setting group for their class. Add location. This is only if you want a physical location um, for people to actually go to join in with this team. So say you had an office somewhere that had it set up as well. This won't be applicable for us just now. And you can put in your details for the meeting here so that people know what it's about. After you've done that and you've saved it, you press send and that will send the invite to everyone that you've asked it to. So for me, it will go into the demo teams and I'll show you that in a second. Calls, this is where you can make individual calls or groups. Again, you won't be really using this with your teams of children, but you might use it as a staff's team type application. So files is where you go to if you want to see any of the files that have been saved to Teams or in your own OneDrive, um, but you're able to add them through the Teams part itself. So actually you don't really need to use files too much. And down here you've got more added apps. So you can add a notebook, a staff notebook, and different wee things. For now, I would advise maybe not looking into this and just sticking to the Teams itself. So that's an overview of the options on the left hand side. I'm gonna pop back into Teams, into the demo class, and you'll now see that the meeting that I scheduled is here, it is now scheduled. If I want to start a conversation with my team, I would do so here, I'd be typing. And this will only come into the team, so it won't go into anywhere else, it'll only be the people in your team that say it. When you're typing, you can just hit enter to send the message, or you can press this send button here. If you want to mention someone specifically, you use the at. And what that will do, it will ping a notification to them to let them know there's a message sitting there for them. You can change your font options, or you can type an even bigger version of the Compose if you want to see a lot more than just the small basic area. Um, you can say that people can reply to it. You can post it in additional channels if you want. So, and this is where channels come in. Again, I'll talk about that in a second, but your channels will be down here. So say you do have your general for the whole class, and then you've got individual channels sitting here for it sections of the class or for groups, you can post it in all of those channels if you want so that everyone sees it or just in the general, it doesn't matter. And you can change the font type, you can add highlights just like you would on a Microsoft Word document. I can add attachments from either OneDrive from my computer, I can upload it direct, um, or from the teams and channels that I already have. I can add in emojis. I can add in GIFs. You can add in stickers and memes as well, just for a bit of fun. And you can also schedule a meeting from here. So I know I've got this meeting scheduled for three o'clock, but you can schedule a meeting for now if you want by clicking this. And I can click meet now. Now I get the option to keep my video on, but in most school authorities, they do not allow children to have their video on. And that's for safeguarding reasons. So. You can either click to meet now, or you can schedule a meeting as we did in, in calendar. Now you can see that how I've scheduled the meeting up here. So the stream icon here is to paste a link from Microsoft Stream. I'll possibly do a tutorial on this later, but truthfully it's unlikely that you're going to be using it. By clicking here, I can send praise to individual people. So I can maybe say, great, Courage Badge is going to go to this person. Um, for their fantastic work on, I don't know, you can put in your note there. So actually a nice wee way to send online rewards and certificates while we're in our lockdown state just now. 
I know quite a few people on Twitter have been asking about this. Some people have been using Class Dojo, and um, some councils do allow it, so that's a great option for rewards if you've got it. But if you don't have it, this is a great way to go about it. And then finally, you can add different apps such as stocks or places or news or Wikipedia search or again forms. Um, but truthfully, you're going to be using that type of thing in other parts. You don't really necessarily have to have it here. Up at the top, we've got files. You can upload class materials if you want to drag files from your desktop into here or upload from your desktop. You can copy links if, say, there's a YouTube video that you want to upload that teaches children how to do things, or maybe you've made your own content that you want them to see. And this is similar to our files down here, except it's exclusive to the class and the channel that you're in. So this is where all of my class materials files are and any other files that I put up. Children can have access to that. Class Notebook is a brilliant thing if you want to have collaborative work going on. Um, there's loads of tutorials on how to use notebooks and there'll be a lot more in depth than I would be able to do so I'd advise checking them out. Any assignments that you've pushed, as I showed you earlier, come up in here. And any grades, if you're rewarding grades, would come up in here. And you can add other things such as a website, say there was a, a video that you wanted to show them or maybe you wanted to add the code.org website or some dog, something that just allows them to get straight onto the place that they need to go for any learning experience, you can add that. You can also add an Excel document if you wanted them to add to it, or a OneNote, or any PDFs. I mean, you can really see how powerful this is. You can add as many tabs as you want. So now I'm gonna show you the channel section. If you go over here, you can click Add Channel, and this will allow me to add, say, Group 1 Learning Together if there's a project that you want a certain group to do. And you can show it on everyone's channel list by clicking here and put in a description so that the students know what that channel's for. The channel itself will then pop up here. So if I'm scheduling a meeting, I can schedule it just for the people in this channel or I can schedule it for everyone. If you want to change or delete a channel, you can do that down here and you can manage it up here. So I'm now gonna show you how to start one of the meetings that you've scheduled. I'd click on the meeting that's been scheduled and I'd press join. And you'll see that I've got some options here. I've got, to I can choose if my video is off or on for the children. I can choose whether to blur my background or not. And it's really quite important to think about your background. Try and keep it plain, try not to have anything in the background that the children might be able to see that could potentially um, be not appropriate. Even just books in the background, that sort of thing. You'll find children trying to read what those book labels are and you wouldn't want them to be embarrassing. You can also choose to mute yourself or not and you can customize the setup such as adding microphones or um, which output channels you've got, that sort of thing. You can add a room as well if you want to have sort of a breakout space for some of your children to go and work later on. So after you've made your settings, just press join now and it'll take you into the screen. Now when one of your students want to join, all they do is they press join on their device. You'll see on their devices, they're actually not able to access the video. I'm not sure if that's the same for all councils, but certainly it is for ours. Um, they will start most likely with the mic is off, um, but they can choose to turn it on just by clicking the mic. And they can choose whether to have their speaker on or off when they join. They just press join now after they press the meeting. So I'll show that once again. They press join, they choose their settings, and then they press join now. And you'll see that their screen will just show you in it. Your screen will have a logo for each of the children that have joined and details about them so you know who it is in the call. If you move your mouse around, you'll see some additional options. You've got hang up if you want to end the meeting. You can show the participants up the right hand side and it shows them all. You can show conversation and I would recommend having this up at all times in a meeting and I'll tell you a wee bit more about that in a second. You've got additional actions. If you forgot to blur your background, you can do it here. You can turn on live captions. I'm gonna do that just now. So live captions show you 
what you're saying at the bottom of the screen, as you can see here. Brilliant if some children have to m mute what you're doing. It's not always accurate though. But for the purposes of this, it's quite good. I can share my screen. Now, if you click on this for the first time, there's a good chance it will come up with um, accessibility warnings, like ask your computer to allow this, that sort of thing. Go through the different process for whatever it is you're doing. Now, I can choose to actually share my desktop. I could choose any files that are already saved to Teams, um, and I can choose a whiteboard. So I'll show you desktop first. This is brilliant if you have stuff on your desktop that you want the children to be able to see. So now you can see my desktop. If you're going to be using this, please make sure that you actually close anything that you don't want children to see beforehand. So now I could open up a Microsoft Word document in the background and I could type instructions such as learning intention or any worksheets that you've already got saved. I mean, your whole desktop is there. You can put PowerPoints, whatever you want. To come back, all you do is click the box over here. You can stop sharing your screen at any point and go back to the normal view. So another share option that you have is down here, and that is to share the whiteboard. And this is a collaboration whiteboard that you can share a link. To collaborate, you just choose your pen, you draw whatever you want, delete, and you can choose as well at any point to stop presenting and it takes you straight back to this. But you can collaborate on the whiteboard, I believe, I've never used it yet, but plan to with the tech team to see what it's like. So that's all of the main options, but I want to go back to the conversation and the participants. This is quite an important one. The conversation especially, because if you're in a class and you've got lots and lots of pupils there, Microsoft Teams can become quite glitchy if lots of people are talking over each other. So it's a really good idea to actually mute all of the class children. To do that, you go into the show participants, hover over their name and click the three dots and mute participant. That will mute them. They can also choose to do that themselves. Participants have to unmute themselves and they can then do that if they've got a question. But a good thing to put in place is to actually say, we're going to use the conversation over here. If you've got a question, just type a question mark and then I'll say your name and you'll be able to then unmute yourself and ask your question. And that way it's not everyone talking over each other, it's just one person at a time. And you can be quite strict in enforcing that by muting individual people up in the top right hand corner again. So if they've got a question, just ask them ask them to put a wee question mark here. It'll come up with the name. Obviously, it's me that's typed this, so it's just me here. Um, you can react to it just to let them know you've seen it. Um, and then you can tell them to unmute at a certain point for them to ask their question. Or maybe you want them to collaborate and you want them to actually demonstrate something. They can do that as well. So pupils actually have the option as well to share. All they have to do is press their more actions button and then it will have the share option. And they can share things like photos, videos. They can share their screen as well if they want to show you individual things. Or maybe they want to show you a project that they've done. So they can show you that by sharing their screen and then opening the camera app. Microsoft Teams is an extremely powerful and in-depth piece of software. I really hope that this video has helped you understand better how we can use Microsoft Teams to take learning forward during this lockdown. Collaboration with our learners is going to be absolutely key in this next term. And I know that in the previous term, a lot of us have just been setting activities and ideas for our children to do, but we do need to be able to have that communication with them and make sure that they're able to access learning. Of course, for some of our learners, it won't be possible to collaborate on GLOW and through Teams, and that's understandable, and we will have to find other ways of working with them and communicating with them. But for the majority of our children, this should be a brilliant way to continue to learn and interact with the class. It will be a different experience completely to what they're used to in school, 
And we won't be able to do it for every lesson all the time. It'll maybe just be once a day or even once a week or a couple of times a week that we do this. But it's still that input that's going to be helpful, that allows the children the chance to ask questions about what they've been doing and what they've been learning. Just gives them that freedom to be able to reach out to their classmates as well and try and collaborate even when you're not hosting a meeting. Again, I really hope that this video has been helpful. If you've got any questions at all, please do get in touch with me on Twitter, at Mr. Feist Class. And if you found this video helpful, please retweet it so that other people can see it and benefit from it as well. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.